Well, hi everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening to some of you guys. Um, hope you guys are all having a great day so far. Um, thank you all for joining us on behalf of WAS Board. I am thrilled to welcome you guys to our very first WAS Hangout of 2021. Um, here with us today is Craft Jam. If you haven't already checked out their website, I'm gonna post it on the chat. Um, there's a super talented, energetic group of individuals whose specialty is hosting these awesome virtual live stream events. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna link their website on the chat so you can check out all of the other fun events that they host. Um, and without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Erin, who's gonna get us rolling on today's activity. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Erin. Um, I have been with Craft Jam for a few months now. I teach mostly embroidery. Um, I am calling in from San Francisco, and I am a textile artist, an illustrator. Um, I do a lot of embroidery. I do a lot of different crafts. Um, crafting is a big part of my life, so, and I love it, and I'm really excited to share it with you today. Um, so how the class is going to work, um, it's beginner embroidery. So if you've never done embroidery, that's totally fine. If you've done it a little bit, um, we'll go over some stitches and maybe you'll get back into it and um, hone your skills a little bit more. Um, so how the class is going to work, um, we're only here for an hour. So um, what I'm going to do is kind of go over all of the supplies you have in your kits. Um, and kind of just go through them one by one, make sure everyone knows what we have. Um, and then I'm gonna demo some stitches. We're gonna learn three basic stitches. Um, but if you've heard of any other stitch or you've seen another stitch that you wanna learn, um, feel free to just let me know and ask and I'll be happy to show you. Um, so after we do our stitches, then we're gonna just start working on our designs. Um, so I have put in the chat um, a PDF of our sample patterns that you are free to work on. You can use those or you can use your own. It's really up to you. Um, and just another couple of things about Zoom. I'm sure everyone is really familiar with Zoom. Um, but just in case, I have two screens going. So my screen where I'm talking and then also my hands screen over here where I'll be demoing everything. Um, and I believe this is being recorded. So if um, you wanna go back and watch it, that's cool. And um, yeah, I know we're a really big class, but if anyone has any questions at any point, um, feel free to ask me. And also uh, you can put it in the chat too and I'll be happy to answer them for you. So, okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing we'll do is just go over everything we have in the kits. So we should have, yes, these very cute, mine are a little bit different, but everyone should have these embroidery scissors. Um, we have a needle threader, which I'll go over how to use when we start doing our stitches. Um, embroidery needles, embroidery floss, which is just our thread, we call it embroidery floss. Um, a hoop. Here. Um, we should have a pen for tracing and also our tracing paper, which is double sided. If you feel one side is kind of textured and one is, has this kind of paper on the back. Um, this is for transferring our designs and I will go over how to use it once we get to that point. So something that we can do as I'm kind of going over everything is um, we can just, what I like to do anyway, is just kind of start thinking about my colors, thinking about my design, um, just to kind of like have it in the back of our heads, like as we're going over this stuff. So once we like start to do our designs, we're kind of have an idea of what we want to do. Okay, so our embroidery hoop is this here and this unscrews and it's in two different pieces like this. So these are really great because of course you can do embroidery without a hoop, um, but hoops are really great because they keep our fabric in place. They keep it really nice and tight. Um, if your fabric is wrinkled, like mine is always wrinkled, um, it kind of helps keep 
the or get all of the wrinkles out and keep it nice and tight and in place. Um, so then we have our embroidery floss. Um, I think everyone should have this brand called DMC. Um, I really like this floss a lot. It's a good quality floss. Um, something that's really great about it is that it's color fast, which means that the color is not going to run if you get it wet. Um, so that's nice if you're working on a piece like a garment or anything you might take outside that could possibly get wet or that you use um, like a dish towel or something like that. Um, and this floss, if you'll notice, if you pull it out a little bit from the skein, you'll notice that it comes in six different strands. So this is nice because when you're working on a piece, you can decide how thick or thin you want your lines to be. So you can pull your thread apart and work with three strands at a time, two strands or one strand. It's really up to you. Um, the nice thing about embroidery is that you can really customize it and really make it your own um, depending on you know, your line thickness, your line weight. Um, that's completely up to you as the artist. and. Um, it's depending on your piece. So that's a really nice thing about this floss. Um, another thing you'll notice on the back here is that um, every floss has a color number. And this is really helpful if you're working on a piece and you run out of um, thread midway and you need to get the same color, you can just look up the color number and get the same exact floss. Another thing that's helpful that we should have in our kits are these little bobbins. Um, these are really helpful for storing your floss, just kind of wrap it around. And um, the kits that everyone has are really nice for you know, travel. If you're taking your embroidery, you wanna take it outside or in the car or something like that. It's really easy to store all of your floss. So everyone should have these plastic bobbins. I actually just made this one myself out of a piece of paper. So that's always an option. For you to do too. And next we have our embroidery needle. Um, embroidery needles are just like sewing needles, except for the eye up here where we put our floss is thicker, it's wider, um, so that we can fit thicker strands of thread through it. And then we have our embroidery um, needle threader. So are there any questions so far about our supplies? Does everyone kind of have what they need? Uh, how can you tell the difference between the two threaders? Um, which threader do you have? <laughs> so I've got, this is probably not helping even a little bit. I've got a pink one. Okay. And then I've got a red one, but I'm not, I don't usually use these. So I'm not entirely sure if there's a difference or uh, it looks like the pink one has a slightly thicker wire to it, mm -hmm. but I don't know. Yeah, I think they should be the same. Um, I'll demo how to use them. And then if um, one is not working well, just let me know and maybe we'll try to figure it out. But I cool. think they should be, I think they should be the same. Yeah. Nice, okay, thanks. Okay. Okay, so the first thing that we'll do. I have one doubt. Oh. Uh, uh, the ring, the hook that you gave, mm -hmm. uh, should um, when you unscrew the uh, thing, uh, there is a. Uh, maybe I can show you this. Give me one sec. Can you see me? Yeah. Can you see this? There's some um, extra thing in here. So uh, should I insert the uh, screw uh, this way or in this way? Um, Can you see the uh, little notch in here? Mm -hmm. so, so it should go through it. It should go through the side. Like if you can see here, it should go from um, one side to the other, not yeah, like yeah, um, but but do you see uh, the thing here? Uh, that I think you need to insert it on the flat side, not the side that has the little extra bump. I I I, I see what you're talking about. So it's the other way, right? Yeah. Okay. Here. okay. 
I don't know if you can see me or not. Yeah, I see that little, little yeah. bumpy. You want it to go in that okay. way. You see? Uh, yeah, there's, there's a little channel that the screw goes into. So if you have the channel on your left side, then your screw would go from right to left. I think that's what you're talking about, Jess, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> so, uh, so put my screw into the in through the channel, right? Through the projection. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like it starts from the flat side and then goes through into the channel. I can take a picture and send one to you. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Very smart, Des. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't think I could see really well what you're asking, but um, yeah, it should go from right to left, kind of like this. Yeah, I think people have um, said in previous classes that it's really tight to unscrew. Um, other people have used their scissors to kind of loosen it. Um, yeah, it's probably just because it's the first time that we're using the hoops that yeah, pliers. Mine had one of these little, um, I don't, I'm sorry, I'm so not technical. What is it like the little like stopper? And so I had to get a tool to undo the stopper. Yours looks like it's just a screw, but you yeah, need a mine... back stopper, like mm -hmm. nut, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. So that was hard to undo, but I, I used another tool to do that. Yeah, I know people, other people have used like little mini pliers or scissors to kind of get it open. Mine, yeah, my hoop doesn't have, um, Kind of like a stopper on the end it's just one screw um but yeah probably just because it's the first time we're using the hoops that um they're a little stiff but hopefully we'll all get them open <laughs> so okay the first thing we'll do once everyone kind of has their hoop in two different pieces is we're going to put our fabric in our hoop and this can be kind of tricky at first, kind of the first time you do it, um, but then it gets a lot easier. So what I like to do is I usually put my hoop, the, the piece without the screw on it, just the plain hoop. I like to put it down on the table to just have a flat surface. And then I just place my fabric on top of it. And you wanna make sure that there's enough of the fabric around the hoop. We don't want to put it really like this or anything. We want to make sure there's enough, enough fabric around. And then what I like to do is just kind of loosen the screw so it's enough space. And I just stretch the hoop on top and kind of place it down like that. So I have my fabric here. I just open my hoop and place it right on top. And then I'm just going to tighten the top screw so that there's enough tension when I kind of pull my fabric around. Is a fabric given along with the package? Yeah, so everyone should have fabric. Are you, do you have that or are you missing it? I think I'm missing it. Okay. It might be folded in with the tracing paper. That's where mine was. Okay. Yeah, it might be um, with this other paper. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah. Okay. Catherine only has one loop, one hoop. Do yeah, I only have the hoop with the screws on it. Oh wait, do you unscrew it and then disconnect? Does mm -hmm. it matter if you have that bottom hoop without the screw? So it, it should come open. Oh, I see. Okay, so open that up. Sorry. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. okay. I got yeah, it. So <laughs> we'll just open it so there's two pieces and then, yeah, the, the piece of the hoop without the screw Perfect. goes on the bottom. So. Um, okay, I got it. Thank you. Okay, sure. So we don't have to. Okay, how tight do we want this? 
we don't have to make it too tight, but I like to have enough tension that if I kind of like tap on the fabric, it kind of sounds like a drum. I mean, you don't have to like pull it, but um, I just like to keep it tight enough so that I kind of get all the wrinkles out. It's nice and smooth. Um, and then, yeah, I like to do like the little tap test just to see. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is we're going to thread our needle. Um, and like I was saying before, we can kind of decide how thick or thin we want our lines to be. Um, I'm going to do a three strand when I'm demoing the stitches, just so that we can see um, we can see them well when, once I do them. So to thread our needle, we can just pull our thread out from the skein. And you can just do maybe like, uh, I like to do kind of like my arm length of my forearm. Um, I don't usually like to make my thread super long because it's easier to get it tangled and kind of get knots. So we keep it kind of short. And then we can just snip the end. I'm just going to pull my thread apart. So I have three strands, but that is totally up to you how thick you want your thread to be. So if we're going to use our needle threader, um, this is just a really simple way to thread our needle. We can also always just like, you know, like the end of the thread and put it through the needle if you don't have one, but we have them. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to take the end of the needle threader, this kind of um, metal part here, and we're going to put it through the eye of the needle and just push the needle back so it should look like this. And the next thing we'll do is we'll just take our thread and we put it through the eye of the needle threader. So why we use the needle threader is, is just because the thread might be thick and it might be hard to get it through this tiny eye of the needle. But if we put it through the bigger eye of the needle threader, it's a lot easier, it's a much bigger space to get our thread through. So it should look like this. We have our thread kind of hanging and just have a little tail kind of hanging off like this. Can and then we just again, can you do that? Can you do this again? Yeah, of course. The beginning. Yeah. So we take our needle threader mm -hmm. and we put it through the eye of the needle, like where our thread would go. Mm -hmm. We're just threading our needle with the needle threader. <laughs> and then we take our thread. And we just put the thread through the big eye of the needle threader. Okay. And then we just pull it a little bit so we kind of have a little tail hanging. Okay. And then we just pull our needle from the back through the front of the needle threader and just until it catches the thread. Okay. And then we can just pull it and pull our needle threader off. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions about that so far or about um, how to get our fabric on the hoop? You said I'd like to thank you. I have never known how to use a needle threader before. <laughs> um, yeah. I was today years old when <laughs> I learned how to use this. So thank you. No problem. Yeah, I, I actually never really used them before. Um, I was just kind of like, put the thread in my mouth, but it's a lot um, easier to do it the other way, so.
you said you're doing three lines of floss, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, but again, you can use as many as you want. It's completely. What would up. you recommend for the fabric that went out with the kits? Um, I would use maybe, yeah, maybe three or four strands. Um, I think the fabric you have is, is a little bit thicker than the one I'm using, but um, yeah, I think three should be fine. When you're all referring to three or four strands, do you mean that you have three or four strands attached to your one needle or three or four different colors? Yeah, just three, um, three or four strands within like one strand of one piece of thread. So if you pull out your thread from your skein like this, you'll notice that if you separate that one piece, there are six strands of thread in one piece of floss. So you can decide how thick or thin you want your lines to be. You can separate the threads to make them thinner, or you can use just with the one piece of floss and have a really thick piece. Okay, gotcha, thank you. Yeah. I just like to work with a little bit thinner thread. Um, I find it easier to get it through the fabric, um, but that's completely up to you. <laughs> okay, so once we have our needle threaded, I'm just gonna make a knot, just a simple knot, simple loop knot on the end and just pull it. So we just have something like that. And at the top of our thread, our needle should just have a little bit of a tail. So we don't have to double our thread like this. We just keep a little bit of a tail at the top like that. Sorry, where did you knot it? So I just do a simple knot on the end of our thread. Okay, so not at the tail part, but at the other part. Yeah, so okay. yeah. The top of the needle just has the little tail kind of hanging and the other side just has a little knot. So the three stitches that we're gonna learn, I have a little example here, just so we know kind of what we're looking at. Um, the first stitch is called a running stitch, and that's this one here. Um, just kind of looks like a dashed or dotted line. Um, the next stitch is the back stitch. Um, I love this stitch. I use it in most of my embroidery projects. Um, it's just looks like one solid line. Um, and it's really great for outlining things or even filling things in, adding texture. Um, you can use it for really anything. Uh, and then the next stitch is the chain stitch, which you'll see here. It looks like a little chain. Um, and so this one is really good too for doing texture or filling big areas in. Um, and yeah, it's great for doing like a landscape or anything like that. So we're gonna go over all three of those. So when everyone is ready, is everyone kind of set up with their fabric and got their needle? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I know that everyone probably just has one piece of fabric. I don't know if we have scrap fabric, but okay, if we just have one, that's fine. Um, we can kind of do it, you know, you can practice just doing like small stitches, maybe like towards the bottom here, if you don't wanna, you know, use the whole fabric for your practice stitches, if you wanna save your fabric for your, you know, project. Um, and we do have a bag. Um that the stuff came in that you could also uh, embroider on. Oh um, yeah, that's true. And yeah, you can take them out, definitely. Um, I've used this piece of fabric a bunch of times for demos, so I just keep reusing and 
um, taking my thread out. You can, you can save the thread too. You don't have to cut everything. Um, so that's up to you. Um, or if you just have like a scrap piece of paper or scrap piece of fabric around, like someone said, yeah, pillowcase, anything would be great. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the running stitch. So to start any stitch, we're gonna take our needle and we're gonna start from the back. I just have dash lines on my fabric that I just drew with my water soluble pen. Um, I just like to do that um, for beginner embroidery because sometimes we can get frustrated with embroidery when we're first learning. And if we're trying to do a straight line and it comes out you know, all different ways, um, we can get frustrated and then we might not wanna keep doing it. So I just like to do a little dash line just so I have a straight line and it's just kind of easier for me to practice. So you're welcome to do that or just go for it. <laughs> so we'll start from the back and we'll bring our needle up and pull our thread through. So we hit the knot and we feel that little bit of tension in the back. And then to make our first stitch, we just bring our needle forward and we can decide how long we want our thread or our stitch, excuse me, how long we want our stitch or how short, um, that's up to you. That's the nice thing about embroidery is that we all kind of learn the same basic stitches, but depending on how we use them, it's all gonna look different. So everyone's embroidery, everyone's project is all gonna look really different and really unique. So we'll put our needle in and we'll pull through and we have our first stitch. And the running stitch is just repetitive over and over. We bring our needle through the back, pull it through. And just keep stitching. And that is the running stitch. Does anyone have any questions about this so far? We're pro at this now. I'm going to do the Waz logo next. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do too. I was going to do the Waz logo as well. Oh, I'm totally kidding. You have to do it because I can't. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting cocky. I have two stitches in. I mean, that would be cool because then you could have like people taking pictures of it and you could put them next to each other and as and it'll all be looking slightly different. I love that. I love your confidence. I'm just really impressed by how you're keeping those stitches the same length, just freehanding it. <laughs> I mean, I, I do have the dash line in between me. <laughs> but there's really like no wrong way to do embroidery. Um, it's really just everyone's personal preference for, I mean, with any craft, it's anyone's personal preference, but. Um, you say that, wait till you see mine when it's done. <laughs> I'm excited to see everyone's work. <laughs> All right, where should the knot be? Should it be at the end of the needle or the front? Because I just did a stitch and then it all just came undone. So I'm assuming my knot was not in the wrong, right place. Yeah, so the knot should be at the end of the needle. So the front of the needle is just kind of loose like this. So it just has like a little bit of a tail um, and the knot should be at the end. So if you can see here, my knot is all the way at the beginning of my stitch. So when you first put your, your needle through, you should feel the knot from the first stitch. You should feel it hit the fabric. You so might have to sense. double the knot. So I know I had to do that for mine. Yeah, if you're using a thin piece of floss, you might have to, yeah, double it so it stays. <laughs> um, so then when I finish a stitch, I just make a knot again at the end, just the same, same kind of knot I made at the beginning. Um, I like to just keep my needle threaded and I just make a loop, put my needle through, and just make a simple knot. You can always just cut your thread and then knot it after. Um, I just find this way to be 
easier for me and less steps. <laughs> and then I'll just trim my thread at the end and re knot it. Okay, so the next stitch we're gonna do is the back stitch. Um, we're gonna start the stitch the same way as we did the running stitch. We're gonna bring our needle up through the back and pull it through till we fill the knot. And then the same as the first stitch that we just did, we're gonna bring our needle through the top and pull it through. So we have the same stitch as the running stitch so far. The next thing we'll do, instead of going forwards, we're gonna go backwards. So we'll bring our needle up from the back. And this is the same, you can decide how far apart you want your stitches to be. You can make them really tight and close together, or a little bit farther apart. So we'll bring our needle up through the back and pull it through. And instead of going forwards to make the running stitch, we're gonna bring our needle back to where our first stitch just ended. So we don't have to get it in the exact same hole, but we wanna get it pretty close. So if everyone can see, I'm just bringing my needle back to meet that first stitch. I'm gonna pull it through. So now we have an almost like seamless line going. And we'll just repeat that, bringing our needle up from the back and putting it back to meet our last stitch. Does anyone have questions about this? I can imagine it's hard to like keep it straight, which is why you need the <laughs> pattern for the line. <laughs> yeah, it helps, especially like, you know, when we're first learning. <laughs> yeah, some lines are already going crooked, but that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, so definitely not a dumb question. <laughs> um, the stitch that I like to use when I'm filling in, um, do you mean kind of like when we're filling in a, an area of space? 
Yes, exactly. Okay, yeah. So what I like to do, the stitch I like to use is called um, satin stitch. And I can demo that right now. So if I have, let's say, I wanna fill in this square here. I'm gonna take my needle from the back and pull it through. And I'll pull it forward just like we did for our first two stitches. And for the satin stitch, you bring your needle back to where you first started. And you're basically just making a bunch of stitches right next to each other. So we pull it through and we just keep going. And we'll just fill in the whole space like that. So it's just a bunch of forward stitches over and over again, so kind of starting from the same place. And this stitch is great for filling in big areas. And you can even use a thicker thread. You could use six strands of thread or four or five um, to kind of fill it in faster. Um, so you'll see it just kind of looks like a nice, like seamless block of color. Does that make sense? Cool. <laughs> yes, thanks so much. Okay, no problem. I mean, you can use any of these stitches to fill in an area, but that's kind of, I think the easiest one, if you wanna get like a flat texture. Okay, so the last stitch we're gonna learn is the chain stitch. Um, this one is a little more, not complicated, but it's a little bit, there's a few more steps. So I'm gonna demo it um, and if there's questions, I'll go over it again. I'll do it a couple of times so we can all kind of see. Um, I'm sorry. And then when, when you end it, will you show us how you tie a knot at the end? Because the bane of my existence has been when I finish a like sewing thing, like mm -hmm. my knot is like, you know, a quarter of an inch or something from the fabric. Yeah. So you use a little trick. So when you end it, will you just slow down and show that part? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I know the frustration. <laughs> so we'll bring our needle up from the back and pull it through. And we're gonna bring our needle back, like we're making a really tiny um, back stitch. So we're gonna bring it really close to where this first hole is. We're gonna bring it and put our needle through. And when we pull it through, we're just gonna be left with this little loop. So we're gonna pull it until we get this little loop, like as big as we want our stitch to be. So as you can see, that's the thread that first came up and that's our stitch. Now to make the chain, our needles in the back, so we bring it up through the center of that little loop. So it looks like this. And we bring our thread through and we just pull until the loop hits that first thread. So you don't have to pull it super tight, but we just wanna pull it so that it's laying flat and kind of looks like that. And to make our next stitch, we just do the same thing over and over again. So we'll have, we have our thread coming up. We'll take our needle, we put it back to where that last stitch just came out. Put it through. I just like to hold my thread. So it lays flat. 
So we're gonna get another small little loop. And those are our little chains. With the second stitch that you put in, mm -hmm. do you put it also in the loop or slightly on the outside? I put it in the loop. Okay. So I'll bring my needle through. Sorry, my finger's in the way. <laughs> bring our needle through the center. And pull it just so it hits that thread. And then yeah, in the loop to meet the last thread. So this stitch, you can kind of decide, yeah, how thick or thin or how far apart you want your stitches to be. Um, this one that I showed in the beginning, um, they're very close together and this is a thicker thread. So you can kind of already see like how different the same stitch can look from this one to this one over here. So that's really, your preference. Does anyone have any questions or want me to start that one again? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so I will, I'll do it again, but I'll first show you how to make the knot on the back. So if this is the end of my stitch, I'll just put my needle kind of on the outside of that little loop. I'll just pull it so it's flat. And then to get our knot really close to our fabric, I just leave my needle threaded and I make a loop. I'll make a loop with this thread that's in my fabric and I'll put my needle through that loop. So I'm just making that simple knot, but I'm leaving my needle threaded and my needle or in my thread in my fabric. So then I'll just pull it to get that simple knot. And then I like to just take my needle, I put it through the loop of the knot. That way, when I pull my thread, it hits the needle and stays right flush to to the fabric. Does that make sense? All right, cool. So I'll do the chain stitch again from the beginning. I'll use a little bit of a thicker thread. It might help to see it. So if everyone or if anyone has these stitches kind of down and they want to start their on their template, on their project, um, feel free to do so. And um, I will go over some ways to transfer our designs. But if you wanna start doing that, go for it. I know we don't have like too much time left, but feel free to start. Okay, so for the chain stitch, bring it up from the back and pull it through. And I'll bring my needle back to where that thread just came. And I'll put my needle through and pull it 
until I have a little loop. And then I put my needle through the center of that loop. And pull it just until the loop catches that thread until we like feel that little bit of tension. And then take our needle back inside the hoop, right next to our last piece of thread. <laughs> and then pull it until we get another little loop. Does that make a little more sense? Is that a little bit clearer? Yeah, thank you. It was, it was the first to second loop that I was like, Mer? Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, I don't know where to go from here. <laughs> OK. Wait, so there's a couple different ways we can transfer onto our fabric. Um, everyone should have the water-soluble pen. Um, I use this a lot um, if I'm just doing freehand um, right onto my fabric. Um, they obviously erase with water, but they also erase just with time. So if you're doing like a more complicated um, piece, you might not want to use this because if you're working on it for several days, um, it might just evaporate. So this is one option. The other thing that we have in our kits is this um, transfer paper. And this is really nice because you can draw, either draw directly onto this, kind of this textured side up, um, and then stick it onto your fabric, which I'll show how to do. Um, or you can also print directly onto this. You can put this in a printer and print your designs right onto this. Um, or I'm not sure if this is really, yeah, I don't think you can really see through this to trace, but. Um, we can draw directly onto here. Um, for example, if I just want to draw like. Does it work with the laser printer or does it have to be inkjet? I think it works with either. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So if this is my design, just this kind of like triangle, I can peel. the sticky part off and I can just actually stick this right to my fabric. You know, you can cut out the shape or you can leave it as big as you want. You can stick it right to your fabric um, and then this will actually disintegrate into water also. So if you submerge your um, fabric when you're done, um, the paper, this kind of sticky stuff will just disintegrate and then you're just left with your stitches so it'll just you can stitch right through the fabric and the, the paper um, and then once you're done you'll just be left with your stitches so this is another option um, if we want to do a design right from the template that we sent out with the kits um, I put it in the chat um, just to have it on our computer or you can use your phone and actually just take your your fabric and just hold it um, right up to your screen and trace using the water pencil or a regular pencil or something like that. Um, you can also, if you have it printed, you can always use a window, um, a light box, something like that, and just trace right up onto your fabric. Um, so I put the PDF, it should be one of the first things in the chat. Um, the craft gem beginner embroidery template. If somebody joins late, they don't see the previous chat messages. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. I will add it right now. <laughs> Thanks, Erin. Yeah, it's annoying that it doesn't do that. Okay. 
always learning new things about Zoom. <laughs> okay. Sorry, did you say if you use this like awesome kind of sticky fabric mm -hmm. um, that you ha then you want you put your thing in water mm -hmm. and it will and then does that then okay I got it. All right. Yeah, so if this little triangle was my design, I would cut it a little bit closer um, to my design and then just stitch through both layers. And then once we're done stitching, um, yeah, it disintegrates into water. So Amazing. so it'd be left with the stitches around it. Yeah, so the marker also um, will come off with water. And I think I have a different one than you do. I, mine comes off with water. I know yours comes off with water and just air do. So if you just leave it for a week, it should like disintegrate. <laughs> so does anyone have any other questions about how to get our designs onto our fabric? And get these ways will work for everyone. <laughs> I'm guessing going with like a bigger design on your first go around would make it easier than like a really tiny one. Yeah, I mean, it all depends. Um, it also depends how long you want to spend working on it. You know, um, embroidery is time consuming, but it's also nice because it can be very meditative and, um, you know, you can be doing it for a while and not even realize like you spent hours doing it. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's really, it's really up to you. <laughs> I have this design from our template to do, so. The great thing about these embroidery hoops is that they're pretty inexpensive. So um, I have like this size. I know they come in all different sizes. Like I have a, a much bigger one too. Um, these are wood, but the plastic ones work just as well. Um, and you can always just keep your piece in the embroidery hoop and kind of like finish it off that way and use them as little like ornaments or hanging wall pieces. Um, so, and if you get a bunch of them, just keep your piece in your hoop and um, it's pretty inexpensive to do it that way. Um, and you can use any stitch you want to, to do these. Um, Backstitch, yeah, for an outline, um, backstitch works really well to make the solid plane. Um, but you can also use the, the running stitch or really any stitch you want. Yeah. <laughs> you can use a satin stitch just to fill it in or not outline it, all up to you. <laughs> Um, yeah, I can demo how to do a French knot. Mm -hmm. I'll just do it from here. The French knot is really nice for adding texture. Yeah, it is easier than the chain. The chain stitch is, is a little bit <laughs> complicated to teach, but not so bad once you get the hang of it.
Okay, so for the French knot, I'm just using two strands of thread because um, it was left over from my last four strands. Um, French knot is a little bit easier to use with um, less strands. And you'll see why when you're pulling it through, um, if you're using really thick floss, it can be kind of difficult to um, get your needle through. So I'm gonna use two strands and I double knot at the end so that it stays in my fabric. Oh, the water pencil, I, I meant to say water pen. It's just um, the pen that came with your kit, um, the erasable pen. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so for the French knot, we'll bring our needle up from the back. Um, and there are a couple of different ways you can make the French knot. Um, I'll show you the one that I usually use. Um, we'll take our thread that's hanging pulled up like this. And we'll take our needle and we wrap our thread going like counterclockwise around the outside of the needle. So we wrap it once, twice, three times. Um, and you can wrap it twice, three times, four times. Um, I usually do three times. So we wrap it three times around the outside, so it looks like this. <laughs> um, and then we'll just take our needle and the same way we did for the chain stitch, we put it back like, very, very close to where the thread came up. So we don't wanna make it like, we don't wanna make a big space in between like over here. We want to keep it really close. So once our thread is wrapped, we put the needle back in and all those little wraps we made around our needle, we just pull it through and that's what makes the little knot. So it's really tiny here, but um, these are really nice for adding a lot of texture. So if you do a bunch of like little French knots next to each other, you can fill in a space that way. Um, you can make really nice texture, um, highlights, all kinds of different things with these little knots. And you can just keep going. You don't have to cut your thread in between every one. You can just keep going and just keep making more little knots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I'll do it again here. Take my needle and my thread and I wrap it on the outside of my needle once, twice, three times. And then I put my needle with the wrapped thread, I put it right where my thread came up. And so we're kind of left with that. And we pull it through and that makes our little knot. So I know that we only had an hour, so I don't know if people are gonna start hopping off, but um, you're welcome to stay a little bit longer if we're still working on stuff, but um, thank you so much for joining. Um, I'll just put my little paper here. Um, if you have any questions, you can um, reach out. Hello at Craft Jam. Um, this is our Instagram, craftjam.co. And then my Instagram is Prince and Seams. Um, again, my name is Erin. Um, if you have any questions or want to like reach out to me about anything, um, you can always do that. So thank you so much. <laughs> and I hope everyone had fun and like learned some stuff. So. <laughs> Thank you, Erin. That was super helpful.
Thank you. <laughs> I know we didn't have too much time to like work on a project, but um, hopefully everyone enjoyed it and will continue on their own. And feel free to like tag us or anything. We love to see projects that are finished or in process. So. <laughs>